of Osiris is an acquisition which we announced in, in, the, in the last month. Um, and uh, this is a business that was acquired by Caterpillar globally. Uh, you know, as dealers, we were pushing the Caterpillar organization to broaden its range of, of mining solutions. And we get access through this acquisition to a massive incremental range of mining products. So uh, drag lines, it gives you a sense operating in the Middleburg coal region. You get these kind of products. Uh, that's a 747 airplane. So it gives you a sense of the scale. These can sell up to a billion rand for a single uh, unit. Um, this, is, this is a unit, it's a, a hydraulic shovel just being delivered up to northern Mozambique to the, Mo, uh, to the Motiz coal fields where we've won contracts with Valet and, and Rio Tinto. So that's, that's just been assembled in the last few weeks on the Mozambique site. The picture was sent to me last week. This is underground uh, coal opportunities. Uh, it's a drag line. Uh, th these are rope shovels. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got three of these operating up in uh, Botswana at the Juaneng mine site. So this was the Basiris acquisition, cost us 1.4 billion rand. Um, but strategically, why is it important? As of last month, uh, this, is, this is the range of Caterpillar equipment we sold. So this is a typical surface mine and the range of equipment that gets sold. And this is a typical underground mine and the range of equipment that gets sold. As of last month, the equipment we could sell mining trucks, motor graders, wheel loaders, bulldozers, and a very limited range of LHD underground mining equipment. Uh, as of the 1st of July, this is the product range that we will have. So we go from uh, uh, participating in about 25% of the equipment opportunity on a, on a typical surface or underground mine site uh, to be able to participate across almost the full spectrum uh, of, of, of opportunity. So uh, I've given pictures of the large uh, uh, drag lines, hydraulic shovels, rope shovels, uh, smaller rope shovels, high wall miners, uh, drills, uh, and then under, underground drills, underground uh, shearers, and, and so on, for room and pillar mining and underground coal and so on. So this represents a massive opportunity, and we've got the opportunity from the, the whole of southern Africa and, uh, and the majority of, of, of Russia. So very exciting for us. Moving on to Russia, where we will now have this, gives you a sense of the scale. This is one of the mine sites we... we uh, uh, we operate in, in Russia. Our territory, uh, and this is not that visible, but just to give you a, a sense, the territory we operate in Russia, which is broadly, this map is e easier to see. This is Siberia, and this is the Russian Far East. So it's two geographies, but territorially, that is bigger than the whole of the United States, plus Germany, plus France. Fits into that. Okay? It's six and a half hours to fly from Novosibirsk to Magadan. Okay? It crosses six time zones. Okay, so it just gives you a sense. If I fly from South Africa to Novosibirsk, uh, I leave uh, Sunday night, I arrive in Novosibirsk Tuesday morning. If I, if I want to go to Magadan, that's another seven-hour flight plus another six hours time change. So I'd be there Wednesday evening if I left Sunday night. So it just gives you a sense of the scale. Um, and uh, and you know, some of the, most of our territory sits in the Arctic Circle. Uh, so you're operating in very different temperatures, minus 50 degrees. We've got a person uh, sitting here in Magadan. We sent him from 40 degree heat in the Congo to minus 50 degree heat for nine months of the, minus 50 degree cold for nine months of the year uh, in, 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 in Magadan. So the nature of operating in these territories is, is difficult, but if you can do it well and you're able to manage the risks that come with it, uh, the opportunities are enormous because many of your competitors do not have the people, opportunities, facilities to be able to service remote mine sites like this uh, in, a, in, a, in an effective manner. So it's, it's hugely exciting, it's hugely daunting, but uh, the opportunities are, are, are enormous. This is a Polis uh, mine site. Um, in, you, you probably can't even see it here, but there's a, there's a mining truck there and there's a mining truck there. Now, th those trucks are are double the size of this, uh, this ceiling. Yeah, the, the, the wheels go up to about the ceiling and the truck sits on top of that. So it gives you a sense of the scale you're talking about here. And of course, these all come with Arctic packages because at minus 50 degrees, uh, you know, the petrol would, would uh, the diesel would freeze overnight unless, uh, unless you had uh, uh, conditions that, that could deal effectively with it. This gives you some, some pictures as well that the challenge you have in, in Siberia, although it's minus 50 degrees for most of the winter, in the summer months in July, it can get to 35 degrees heat. So the, the snow melts and you get these, this is also taken in si Siberia, you get these marshy conditions. Now, this is in a place called Krasnoyask. This is our canteen, staff canteen, sitting uh, under the snow there. 
But it just gives you a sense. Now, to get mining equipment to some of these remote mine sites, you've got to firstly wait for the summer months so that the ships can get the equipment into the port because the, the, free, the, the sea freezes. Okay? Um, so you've got to wait for the summer months to get the, the ship uh, into the port to offload the vehicles. Then you've got to wait till the winter months uh, so it all freezes over so that you can drag the equipment 250 kilometers inland to get it to the mine site. If you're unable to get it that 250 k's before summer comes again, you've got a problem because it turns to marshland again and the equipment will sit there till the next winter because there's no, there's no roads. So you've got to drag it over the, over the ice. So you're operating in, in conditions uh, very difficult. Our service technicians have got to get into some of these sites by helicopter in the summer months. Um, and um, and, and it's, in the winter months, it's sometimes very difficult to, to get out. You can, be, you, can be, you can be snowed in. But at the same time, 94% of Russia's coal sits in our territory there in Russia. And as you know, Russia is one of the biggest coal manufacturers in the world. So um, the opportunities there in coal, in gold, in nickel, Norilsk nickel, Alrosa diamonds, Polis gold, um, the Kuzbas uh, coal fields all sit within our territory in Russia. So the longer-term potential here is huge. I sometimes say when I speak to analysts and so on, on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 was where we started in 1998, no people, no facilities, no nothing. A guy arrived there, Gordon Hall, looking for some land to rent. And we eventually rented it and ported our first Caterpillar machine and, and tried to sell it. This year, we'll be close to a $500 million business uh, in there. But on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 was where we were in 1998. As of today, I would say we had about a 2 or 2.5. So the longer-term potential here is absolutely massive for us.